closing in on almost a month later, I decided to get my ultra slim fit USB drive flash with Batacera version 34 to start my journey with emulation on the Win 600. Now in future videos, I do plan to explore other consoles like the PS2, GameCube, and Wii running on Batacera and see how well certain titles perform. So let me know some of your requests down below. For this video, however, I plan on focusing solely on Wii U emulation as I found it to be the most interesting to see running on a handheld device. So with much excitement, you can finally walk beyond your bathroom and untether yourself from your Wii U console, which probably would have held more meaning several years ago. The reality is that today most of Wii U's high profile releases have made its way to the Nintendo Switch. There are a few that remain exclusively on the Wii U, and for the first part of this video, I will take a look at some of those titles. I promise, there are still some unique games worth playing that still remain exclusive to Nintendo's underperforming Wii U. So grab your favorite beverage, I'm Rob, and this is the Retro Tech Dad channel. The NES Remix series is a collection of NES games that are presented as challenges to complete. It's a fun take on the classic games we know and love. The series got a remix of the remix on 3DS, but these two are still unique to the Wii U, and no version exists on the Switch. Released as part of the Year of Luigi, if you have played Dr. Mario before then this one will not be very different, but again, it's a fun take on the series with Luigi taking the spotlight. No surprise here, but this one runs very well and it is still unique to the Wii U. Fast Racing Neo is the second entry in the series created by Shinin, who I have a bit of a soft spot for. They are very good at squeezing amazing visuals out of Nintendo's platforms and have remained a consistent supporter of them for a long time, dating way back to Iridion 3D on the Game Boy Advance. Fast does have a sequel remix of sorts on the Switch, but this version is still technically unique to the Wii U. It does live up to its name, and racing is very fast and fluid. Here's another one from Shinin, which is Nano Assault Neo, and is a sequel to the 3DS game. This one has never appeared on the Switch, but does have a PS4 version that came out after the Wii U release. Fun fact, the PS4 version is actually Shinin's first game to appear on a non-Nintendo platform. If you are a fan of twin stick shooters, this one is well worth checking out.
Developed by the legendary Intelligent Systems and part of the Pushmo series, Pushmo World is a sequel to both Pushmo and Crashmo from the 3DS. It remains an exclusive to the Wii U and none of the games in the series has seen a release on the Switch. There is a sequel that was also released on the 3DS. This one is a very fun and relaxing puzzle style game and is always a joy to play. This one is one of my favorites that remain exclusive to the Wii U, and that is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. This one is a follow-up to another game I enjoy, which is Kirby's Canvas Curse on the DS. The game has an awesome clay aesthetic, and in this game, you use the touchscreen to fully maneuver Kirby using it to guide him and attack enemies. This one is well suited to the Win 600 because of the touchscreen capabilities. It's gorgeous and runs really well with Simu. Another game with an awesome style, this time using a world crafted with yarn. Yoshi's Woolly World has not seen a release on the Nintendo Switch, but did get a surprising and technically impressive port to the 3DS. However, this game's graphics really need to be appreciated on a higher resolution display, and so it's a great fit here on the Win 600, and Simu handles it really well. I feel like the Paper Mario franchise is a series that has such a divide among fans. For me, I really enjoyed Color Splash when I played it on the Wii U and I think it's an overlooked gem. As always, Paper Mario Color Splash continues the series light RPG elements with good humor and interesting gameplay and visuals. This one has you restoring color to the world with a paintbrush mechanic and a card system for battles. It's another one that makes good use of the touchscreen on the Win 600. This one is likely to remain a Wii U exclusive, and if you haven't tried it out, I say give it a shot, it might surprise you. The Wii U is where it all started for this incredibly popular series. Splatoon is the first game in the franchise and will most likely remain a Wii U exclusive. The game does feature a single player story mode so it's still worth checking out. I really enjoy this series, in particular the visuals and gameplay mechanics are just top notch. And it's another one that does really well on Simu.
By far the most notable of the Wii U exclusive is Xenoblade Chronicles X. This one is a spiritual successor to Xenoblade Chronicles. I will admit I have not played this one outside of my brief time testing it. I did play the original on Wii and poured over 60 hours into it, which I really enjoyed. I'd love to spend some time with this one though. So for this part, all the games shown here have native Switch versions. This is mostly to demonstrate the performance of Simu on Batacera with the Win 600. The first of the games with a Switch release, this one is a great take on the Mario franchise. It's a sequel to 3D Land on the 3DS and combines the 2D and 3D elements of Mario games into one. The Switch version is the definitive way to play this one for me because of the addition of Bowser's Fury. Regardless, it's still a game well worth checking out if Simu is your only option, and it also performs really well here. I have to say from an emulation standpoint, it's amazing how well this is running on such underpowered hardware and shows how far we've come. Props to the Simu team for the continued work. It's funny because I find myself getting very excited when we get decent performance of the GameCube Wind Waker running on Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, but the fact that I'm emulating Wind Waker HD on a handheld is really cool to me. Granted, this device is three times the price of the 2 Plus, but hey, let me enjoy the simple pleasures. I absolutely adore Mario Kart 8. It's easily one of my favorite in the franchise, and I've been playing the series since the Super Nintendo days. I'm happy to say that my daughter shares a similar love for this game, and to this day is the only person to beat me in a race. The game is running here at almost 60 frames per second, and overall feels very smooth and fast.
by far the hardest one of the group and comes so very close to maintaining 30 frames per second to make this one fully playable. It does maintain around 24 frames per second and surprisingly doesn't feel terrible to play, but with there being a Switch version, you're better off playing it there. Still, it's impressive to see it running here on the Athlon 3050E. And so our video comes to an end. I really enjoy going through and learning more about Batacera and getting Sumu all configured on it. I have to say I am pleasantly surprised by the performance overall. Let me know what you think and don't forget to share some recommendations for the other consoles. As always, thank you so much for watching.